morning. Welcome to worship this morning, those who are with us and those that are joining us online. It's good to hear that buzz of conversation before church. That's okay. Just a few announcements to note in the bulletin today. The altar flowers are given by David and Luan Smith in honor of their 50th wedding anniversary. It's a long time. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, In the back, in the lobby, there is an outline of a Christmas tree. That has been put up this year for you to add cards to it. So if you would like to add your family Christmas card to that, you can do so. So there's also a basket for our little Lutherans. We've got some crafts for them them during worship as well. So this afternoon at 3 o'clock, we're going to have a little event here. Um, We're going to have an installation. Uh, Someone asked me this morning, how many times have you been installed? This is my fifth. So maybe we'll get it right this time. (laughs) Um, And I should be your ninth pastor as far as I can figure in your history. So it's an honor uh, to join in that line of pastors who have gone before me. Let us begin our service this morning with the lighting of the Advent candles. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. The third candle that we light today on our Advent wreath is called the Shepherd's Candle. It honors those who were first to share the good news of the Christ child's birth. And the Gospel of Luke tells us, and in that region there were shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall come to all people. We will now sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 4 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, hymn number 257. We rise for the confession. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. 
We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace we may walk in your way, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Our first reading today is from uh, the book of Isaiah. Chapter 25, verses 1 through 10. The prophet here describes the return from the Babylonian captivity as a joyous procession procession to Zion. God's coming reign will bring a renewal of creation in which health and wholeness will be restored. There is no need for fear, for God is coming to save. Beginning with verse 1. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy in singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, 
Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it for it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. The everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Please read with me Psalm 146, verses 5 through 10. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. Our second reading is from James chapter 5, verses 7 through 10. In anticipation of the Lord's coming, Christians are called upon to cultivate patience rather than discontent. Starting with verse 7, be patient therefore beloved until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You must also be patient. Strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Congregation may be seated. I don't think we have any children this morning, but that's okay. I'm going to go on my own little. Oh, we do. Come on over. 
We got one. <laughs> Come on this way. Good morning. How are you? Good. Hey, I'm going to show you something. Can I pick you up? Okay. This is called a Chrismon tree. I know you weren't here last week. So when you see the Chrismons on here, these are kind of different, aren't they? Do you have any of these on your tree at home? Yeah. No, they're going to they're be different. So these are different kinds of ornaments because we put them on a tree at Christmas time in churches. So I'm going to pick three and tell you what they are, unless you can figure them out. What do you think that is? Is that an angel? Okay, that's an angel. And let's see, what's that? That's a butterfly. That's right. So that teaches us about new life in Christ, right? So what's that? Is that a bell? A bell. So that's like a Christmas bell. So these are the things we have, we celebrate for Christmas. Okay? Let's have a prayer. Thank you, God, for giving us messages about your coming and teaching us about your Son who comes to give us life. In his name we pray. Amen. Okay, now you can go back to Grandma. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, the living Christ. So one Sunday morning, a minister in Scotland was skating across a frozen river. And the district convened to examine the minister about his violation of the Sabbath. The minister explained in his Scottish brogue, As you know, I preach two churches on each Sunday. And last Sunday I was a wee bit late getting between one service to the other. And I knew I could save time by skating across the river. I didn't know that deeds of service are not permitted on the Lord's day. His accuser replied, Of course, we don't care why. Ye skated across the river, lad. He then leaned into the preacher's face and said, One thing concerns us. Did ye enjoy it? <laughs> Did ye enjoy it? We've all met wet blanket Christians who want to make sure that no one actually enjoys Jesus Christ. Spiritual descendants of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, folks to be pitied because a glad heart is the hallmark of a healthy Christian faith. Joy is the surest sign of God's presence. And yet in the early liturgical tradition of the church, it was deemed that this season of Advent, these four weeks leading up to Christmas, was supposed to be like Lent. It was meant to be somber and serious, a time to reflect on one's sins and shortcomings, a time of spiritual preparation and cleansing for the coming celebration of the birth of Christ. Back then, the altar pyramids were purple, like that of Lent. And yet, even in the midst of all that somberness, the church must have realized that there was a problem, because this third Sunday of Advent came to be known as the Joy Sunday. Sort of a break in the midst of all that seriousness to remember the joy that is ours in Christ. In Latin, today is known as Godet Sunday, from the same word we get gaudy from, which is defined as extravagantly bright, showy, even in your face. So this is in your face Sunday. <laughs> so somewhere along the line, a generation ago now, the church either caved into the social pressure of the season to be joyous, or more likely, they went back to the scriptures. And they couldn't help but notice that joy is found there, surrounding the prophecies and preparation for the Messiah's birth. The colors of the altar were changed to that of the blue, the brighter color of the season of Advent. And even the most general examination of scriptures, one cannot help but see that joy is the thread that is woven throughout the Bible. 
The Bible acknowledges pain and suffering and hardship and sacrifice and solemnity, but joy is the bottom line. So catechism question. Pastor Rick, you can't help with this one. What is the shortest verse in the Bible? You don't have to know the reference, but what is the shortest verse? Jesus wept. Well, Rick and I have studied this in the Greek. There's a shorter verse. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 reads, Rejoice always. So we go right to Jesus wept. Rejoice always is actually the shortest verse. And joy is more easily recognized and described. Isaiah does a good job for us in telling us what joy might look like. Joy, says the prophet, is like water streaming through the desert. We don't really know what deserts are in this part of the country, but my wife and I had the privilege in 2017 of going to the Holy Land, and it is desert. There's sand everywhere. It is dry. It is hot. It's sunny every day, unlike Michigan where it's cloudy throughout the winter. But even so, crops can be raised in Israel. Some of the best grapes and the best olives in the world come from that area. When irrigation is pumped in from the Sea of Galilee or the Jordan River, that desert comes to life. So that cracked earth becomes farmland. That is what water can do. As Isaiah said, the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly. And so it is when a human life is touched by the finger of God. When a human spirit finds its home in the spirit of the living God, dryness and dust are replaced by moist, fertile soil in place of death, life blossoms. We preachers have often been accused of mouthing nice-sounding platitudes from the pulpit that don't mean anything in the real world. And we know that the world is filled with pain and sorrow and loss and grief, but for people of faith, grief is not the last word. There's enough suffering in our world and very near to us to break anybody's heart. But I've also seen God make broken hearts whole again. When I did my CPE at Riverside Hospital in Columbus, I was on a neuro floor, people with brain damage and other assorted injuries. There was a woman on our floor who had MS and she was just diagnosed with cancer, brain cancer. And my head nurse said, I want you to go down and visit her. It was the longest walk of my life. <laughs> Walking down that hall, trying to think what I was gonna say as a student pastor to this woman we just got this diagnosis. I timidly went into her room and I said, Shirley, are you there? Hoping she wouldn't hear me. And she said, come on in! You're the new chaplain. We're going to have a worship service. We're going to rejoice and talk about Jesus. She did more for me than I ever did for her. That's what joy is for Christians. We're not exempt from storms. We have no promise that the waves will never sweep us under. But then, nonetheless, we know that the wind is fierce and that life sometimes produces those storms. Christ is there. Christ is reaching out to us and grabbing us in the midst of our doubts and questions. And nothing in this world can steal our joy. Because just being in the presence of Christ being with others in community is our joy. The world can never separate us from Christ. We receive the same answer that John received in prison when he doubted if Jesus was the one. He said, should we look for another? And Jesus said, go and tell him what you hear and what you see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them. If that is not a reason for joy, then I don't know what is. 
One of my favorite authors is Rabbi Harold Kushner. I want to share just a short passage in closing from his book, Full Circle. And as I share this passage, I want you to listen closely. And whenever you hear the word God, I want you to substitute the word joy. This is what he writes. The answer is subtle. Without God, it would be a world where no one was outraged by crime or cruelty. And no one was inspired to put an end to them. It would be a world where if we were the victims of misfortune, we would curse our bad luck. And if someone near to us was a victim, we'd feel an embarrassing sense of relief. In a world without God, it would be no more inspiring goal other than self-interest, amassing as much stuff as possible, having children to gain biological immortality. There would be neither room for no reason for tenderness or generosity or helpfulness. A world without God would be a universe in which gravity pulled us down and there is no counterforce to lift us up, to clean us off when we stumble and assure us that we're worthy of a second chance. Worst of all, in a world without God, we would be all alone. No one to help us when we had to do something hard. No one to forgive us when we had disappointed ourselves or others. No one to replenish us when we had come to the point of using ourselves up. And no one to promise us that even when it's over, it will not be over. The believer in God has to answer the question of why there is evil and cruelty in the world. But the atheist has a more difficult question. He or she has to explain why there is love and honesty and generosity and courage and charity and joy and why it feels so good and so right when we let those qualities into our lives. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit as we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope and joy. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gifts of your spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the ELCA Global Mission. God, in your mercy. Abundant God, we rejoice in your creation. Revive lands we have squandered and depleted. Make gardens flourish in cities and neighborhoods. Cleanse polluted air and water so living things may breathe, drink, and praise you. God, in your mercy. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice and racism and oppression. Deliver all who are unjustly imprisoned or persecuted. Reconcile nations and peoples in conflict. Help us pray for enemies. God, in your mercy. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry, illness, or loss, especially Jim, May, Gary, John, Diane, Carol, May, John, Carrie, Tom, Donna, Juliana, Linda, Lori, Bob, Dolores, Pastor Sarah, Pastor Hank, Laura, David, Rod, Rudy, David, Mary and Alan, Dennis, Kara, Ryan, Van, Alice, Carol, Dave, and Doreen. St. Paul Maybe and Life and Slay Minister Jim Pohl stated supply. The family of Wilda Hawkins. Our confirmation class, Aubrey Bauer, Braden Bauer, Carson Benzing, Claire Cousineau, Juliet Cousineau, Michael Longobauer, and Lamar Longobauer. And all those struggling with COVID-19 all over the world and the people of Ukraine. Strengthen and protect healthcare workers, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to keep others safe. God, in your mercy. Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful of those for whom this season is not happy. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. God, in your mercy. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary and with all the saints that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have died and lead us joyfully sing of your everlasting promises. God, in your mercy. Finally, God of our longing, we know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be seated for the offering.
Please rise. Be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We feast on God's meal of love for us together.
Congregation, please rise. Let us pray. O Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. in peace, serve the Lord. <laughs>